My name is Ari, and for more than 10 years, I've helped thousands with buying a car, first as a dealer and second as a car broker. And I need to tell you something. Do not buy the Audi A4 because it could be a horrible move. The sad part is most of you are going to disregard what I just said and skip right to the lease payment and when you should actually pull the trigger. First of all, if you're looking for an A4, one simple reason why you probably won't end up getting it is the fact that Audi dealers across the US only have less than 600 of them in stock the car you actually want i mean the three series on the other hand there's about 1900 of and there's about 5300 c classes realistically if i had to take on this colossal pain in the ass task of getting an a4 i'd probably land on a premium plus and because audi uses possibly the dumbest way of designating trims i'd probably land on a 45 s line which by the way doesn't mean a bigger engine just means instead of your four cylinder making 200 horsepower it's going to make 260 instead not going to lie the one that i got picked out from cars.com was actually really good looking i ended up landing on an a445 spp and if you don't speak out in these all that means is an a4 s line premium plus mine had an msrp of 51645 all right invoice price six percent that's all it is it's six percent between the dealer's cost and the full msrp but i've always hit above nine percent usually if i'm going to target a sick deal it's going to be between nine to eleven percent on any audi realistically sometimes more than that honestly believe it or not actually one time one manager refused to work with me after the deal was done because i was just I was brutal. Anyway, invoice on this thing. We're probably shooting for a selling price of 48550 In the past few months, guys, I've heard plenty of buzz about people getting really good deals on Audis, and I wouldn't use inventory levels as a gauge for how likely a good deal is. Realistically, if you're not getting invoice, it's okay. However, I wouldn't exactly rule out shopping the competition either. Right now, Audi is offering $1,500 as a credit towards the purchase or a lease of a 2024 Audi A4, 5000 on a 2023. And you guys, some of you who bought out your previous Audi lease may have received a letter inviting you back in. This equates to about a $500 credit towards the next lease. You don't have to turn in the car. You just have to just get another one. Factoring in this $1,500 credit for 2024s, our pre-tax selling price drops to $47,050. I can't tell how I feel about the lease program, you guys. Right now, Audi set the residual on the A4 45 SPP at 58% on a 36-month, 12,000-mile-a-year lease and a slightly disappointing 0.00276 money factor, which equates to about a 6.6% APR on the lease. Now, plugging this all in into the lease calculator, assuming we're getting it at invoice, Assuming you're giving your inception fees due its start, and by far, this is probably the most important thing. Assuming that you've hit like and subscribe, did you click it? We'd be talking about $733 a month. And that's not including your state sales tax. That's probably reason number two why you're probably not going to end up getting it. But the other reason that your total rent charge, basically a fancy way of saying interest being paid, about $8,000. Conversely, if you ended up financing the A4, Audi is hooking you up with an insipid. I learned a new word today. That means lacking flavor, vigor, or interest. An insipid 6.89% APR at 60 months, resulting in a 60-month payment of $929 a month plus tax with the total interest that's being paid at about $8,700. Here's how I would negotiate. This. Dear sales manager, my name is Ari and I am a real pain in the ass negotiator. I'd probably leave that last part out. I really need an Audi A4 and to be honest, this one in particular really gets me fired up. This is where you put a link to one, say like 200 miles away of a white one with say S-Line, etc. Really, really sick, just 
you know, make them know that you got some taste. I realize that the inventory is scarce. However, I do want to give this a shot before moving on to BMW because their product is superior in every single way possible. I am hoping to achieve an out the door final price of no more than $50,000 USD, including your dealer fees and all taxes. I am available to sign and leave a deposit immediately. However, I do have a little bit of time. I am not currently trading anything in. Do you think you can help me accomplish this? Best wishes, Ari. I do need to mention though, real quick, that in order to qualify for these rates on both the purchase and the lease, Audi requires a 740 credit score or better for their tier one bracket. Audi typically does a mid-year model change in the early fall. So in terms of timing, we're a bit far away from the deals getting hotter. I would say closer to like July or August, Audi will increase its incentives on 2024 models to start making room for 2025s. Realistically though, I think pulling the trigger sometime in September is going to yield the best deal overall in terms of an inventory and incentive standpoint however obviously if you're seeing a 2024 in december you'll probably get a nasty deal on that too but from what i'm gathering in 2025 the a4 is actually going all electric and the a5 will pretty much take the place of a traditional gas a4 audi is saying that the a4 is going to hold its value at about 58 percent at year four and apparently 50 percent at year five but i'm having a really really hard time believing them. my rough estimate is around 54 percent at year three and about 48 percent at year five i would not hold on to this thing longer than five years Speaking of which, a car guru's search for a three-year-old A4 with less than 40,000 miles on the odometer, about 500 results roughly, and a great deal rating, this pulled back in a $27,000 Audi A4. In my opinion, I think buying a used one with a solid warranty is the best bet, especially if you can get the warranty for a little bit cheaper, maybe have them just included as a part of a deal. It's really not worth leasing you guys, and I've yet to tell anybody to finance a luxury car brand new. Insurance Insurance was exactly what you may have expected. According to insurerviz.com, the average 40-year-old male with no at-fault accidents in the last three years can expect an average yearly premium of about $2,000, stretching up to $3,500 in New York City and as much as $4,600 in Detroit. Buying a certified one will actually save you a couple hundred bucks, so keep that in mind. Consumer Reports gave this thing a 71, surprisingly. Don't understand why, because predicted reliability was a 42. Some trouble spots to look out for include vehicle electronics, infotainment system, as well as some minor engine issues. I think this revolves around the engine leaking oil, if I can recall correctly, from different complaints. My favorite part, the crash test. Brace yourself. Oh, that was nice. That took that hit pretty well. Okay. I'm going to say something right now that's going to catch a lot of you off guard. I would 100% take this over the BMW and the Mercedes. Just chill out. Just hear me out for a second. Design wise, I would take this over a 3 Series and a C. I'm not talking about overall a better car because BMW is the superior product overall. However, the design is what I'm talking about. If we're talking just the base model sedan, really Audi takes the cake with it being the sexiest of all three of these and the most masculine, if you ask me. With that being said, this recently refreshed 3 Series is definitely a step back in the right direction, especially if it's got M Sport. Did you find this information useful? If you did, it would mean a lot. If you hit Hit this button right here and subscribe. Also, I made this video right here on how to get a lease payment for pretty much any car by yourself. Check it out by clicking here and I will see you on the next one.